Hello, my dear students. Today's topic of learning is a part of endocrine system that is thyroid hormones, right? Uh, so we are going to get details of the anatomy and physiology of thyroid gland. So starting with the anatomy, as you can see in the slide, it is it is located at the junction of larynx and trachea right just in front of trachea you can just see that it is located right so there it is the location it looks like in a shape of a letter h alphabet h or also you can just see that the structure resembles a shape of a butterfly right so that's how it looks like right so thyroid gland this is the location now moving towards the internal structure right externally we have seen that um, the location but now we are moving towards the internal structure so it is composed of follicular cells you can just see that basic unit of thyroid gland this is one unit and this is called as a follicular tissue right follicular tissue is made up of different cells right as you can see that these cells these cells are referred as a follicular cells in between this follicular tissue there is a cavity there is a lumen space this cavity is filled with a gelatinous iodized colloidal substance right that is called as a thyroglobulin thyroglobulin is a glycoprotein and this is very necessary for biosynthesis of thyroid hormones right so this is how it looks like each small the structures right this make the uh, uh, thyroid gland remember that such structures are present only in the lobes right there are two lobes of thyroid gland right lobe and the left lobe this two contains the glandular part this in between portion right which we call as a ethmus ethmus means so junction connecting part right say for example there is a land in between either side of water that land which connects these two side right that is called as a ethmus so this is an ethmus which is a non glandular part it does not synthesize or secrete any hormones only this part lobular part left lobe and right lobe synthesizes and secretes the thyroid hormone right uh, we will learn in the next upcoming slides that there are also some cells which are between or which are outside this follicle right so if it is within the follicular tissue what the name we have given is follicular cells and if it is it, if it is outside this follicular cell we will call it as a para follicular cells right so there are two types of cells which are important follicular cells within this follicular tissue and outside follicular cells there are para follicular cells right so just see we'll have a look yes this is these are the two cells and the function of these two is different follicular cells are involved in the synthesis of the iodothyronines right yes so iodothyronines means those structures which are iodinized and they are involved in bmr that is t3 tri iodothyronine and t4 right and functions of para function of para follicular cells is to synthesize one more hormone from thyroid gland which is important in the maintenance of calcium level yes you rightly predicted it it is called as a calcitonin because it is released from thyroid gland it is also referred as a thyrocalcitonin okay fine so yes can you guess the type of tissue which is present in uh, 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 which is forming this follicular cell yes wherever you have function of secretion remember right it is definitely epithelial tissue glands are always modified epithelia and whenever you have uh, the function of secretion in in terms of you a function of epithelial cells apart from the mucus secreting cells right mucus secreting cells are columnar epithelia but otherwise wherever there is a function of secretion 
definitely it has to be a cuboidal epithelia here it is an one layer that's why it is simple cuboidal epithelial tissue which makes your follicular cells right so this is the type of tissue functions we have already learned that it is involved in synthesis and secretion of t3 and t4 why we have given the name 3 because there is presence of three iodide molecule right so that's why tri iodothyronin similarly in case of t4 there are four molecules of iodide that's why it is called as a tetra iodothyronin or else it is also called as a thyroxine thyroxine wherever it is synthesized or even if in medicine if you just check it is majorly present in levo form that's why it is called as a levo thyroxine or l thyroxine which is widely used very widely used in treatment of hypothyroidism okay parafolliculars moving toward the next cell that is parafollicular cells so parafollicular cells location it is found in the basement membrane of the follicle right we have learned in the first semester b farm that the epithelial cells right they at the bottom they have a basement membrane and just outside this basal basement membrane these cells are para refers to outside right para refers to outside here right para usually refers to near right so here but it is outside the follicular tissue that's why para follicular cells function yes as you have discussed it is secretion of thyrocalcitonin right thyrocalcitonin we will learn in upcoming lecture wherever we will discuss right then then we will discuss it so moving toward a very important part of the chapter the topic that is formation of thyroid hormones okay biosynthesis of thyroid hormones many a times it has been asked in the gtu examinations so we'll learn one by one now as you know that a very important element for the synthesis of thyroid hormone is iodide right so here it is i minus that is what i have shown this iodide is selectively taken up by this thyroid follicular cell this is what i have shown here right this is a follicular cell this cavity is or this lumen is inside the follicular cell so that's why it is a follicular lumen follicular cavity okay now this is outside the cell right this is inside this is inside the cell and this is within the follicular cavity okay so now this i minus as you can see that it is polar in nature and you all know that what is the nature of cell membrane it is definitely made up of phospholipid bilayer and that's why it will allow only non polar uh, substances and not the polar substances so this has to be actively been taken inside the cell this active uptake of the iodide molecule is facilitated by a specific transporter right that is a protein which is present in the cell membrane because it takes iodide along with the sodium that's why it is called as a sodium iodide transporter molecule right these are carrier transporter molecules now wherever as you may be knowing right in, you must have learned in your higher secondary education that if the movement of the charged particle is in same direction because sodium is positive iodide is negative right so both of them once been get transported electrical balance will take place in such a case the movement is only in the one direction right so that case it is called as a sim potter right say for example sodium and calcium are transported but they are in opposite direction that case it is called as a anti potter right so here what is the transporter that is involved in the uh, uh, active entry of iodide yes you rightly recall it is a sodium iodide sim potter molecule right now once inside definitely this is again charged molecule and you can see that this charged molecule cannot come outside the cell and because of this it is called as a trapping it has been taken actively inside but because of its polar nature charged nature right it is charged particle that's why cannot come outside right this is very important and such type of sim potters are present only in the follicular cell nowhere else in the body right so this is very important process iodine is now ready similar type of transporters are available on this side of the cell also which will get which will facilitate its exit in the follicular lumen right so this process this is how the iodine is been taken into follicular lumen 
okay so this is a very important thing so two important things were necessary for uh, are necessary for biosynthesis one is the iodine and second you all know is thyroglobulin right so thyroglobulin is what it is a protein right so protein definitely you can can you just recall again from where it is synthesized which organelle is involved in synthesis of protein yes you rightly mentioned it as a ribosome ribosomes are called as a protein factory and you know that ribosomes are present at two sides as a free particle in cytoplasm as well as they are attached to endoplasmic reticulum wherever they are present within a, a, with a, a endoplasmic reticulum this is called as a rough endoplasmic reticulum right so amino acids are taken from the cytoplasm RER that is rough endoplasmic reticulum will synthesize once synthesized you know that there is a special process we called as a packaging right so packaging is done by the organelle that is your golgi apparatus so thyroglobulin once synthesized from endoplasmic reticulum RER it will get packaged by the golgi body apparatus and this packaged particles in a form of a vesicles are again released in the follicular lumen now you have two things the thyroglobulin and iodide these two substances they get coupled with a specific reaction right that's called as a coupling reaction and this reaction is facilitated by an enzyme called as a thyroperoxidase enzyme why it is called as a peroxidase enzyme because this reaction essentially needs presence of h2o2 and once been h2o2 is taken it will be definitely converted to water harmless water but then that energy released from this will be utilized to form one molecule of this that is mit right this is a complex protein structure we will learn one by one but initially what gets formed is mit this is still linked with another molecules of thyroglobulin right mit refers to mono iodo tyrosine we will again recall one molecule of thyroglobulin plus one molecule of iodide will make mit mono iodo tyrosine right similarly two mit molecule right def, uh, sorry one molecule of uh, 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 your you can say that uh, tg along with two molecules of iodide will make did that is di iodo tyrosine right now this is very simple one mit plus one dit how many molecules of iodides are there yes three and that structure we will call it as a t3 similarly two molecules of d 